Okay, this is going to be the first video on how to find the volume of a solid using cross-sectional areas. Now, for most students, you've just finished up how to find uh, the volumes of revolution using the disk method. And in a way, this is similar to it, but rather than being restricted to circular sections, you can use uh, sections of any geometric shape. So this is actually a little bit more general method. But it'll share some of the characteristics of the disk method. Let's look at the first problem. The first one says this. Find the volume of a solid whose base is the region bounded by the graphs of, and it gives you these two equations, x is equal to y squared and x is equal to 4. Then it goes on to say, assume that the cross sections are perpendicular to the x-axis and in this case have the shape of a square. So you want to find what this volume looks like. Now, before we get around to looking at the problem, I'm going to show you what I would recommend is a series of steps to solve this. And I usually break them down into these six steps, and we'll come back to this later on. Uh, the first two steps involve making a sketch of the object, and the last four steps involve solving the problem. Now, we'll come back to these later on, but let's go ahead and go back to the problem and take a look at it. Now, depending on the book you have, if you're unlucky, it will just give you the problem in the form of words, and it won't give you a sketch to go along with it. But some books give you a sketch. Let's assume that your book was nice and they actually gave you a sketch and it looked something like this. So here's what the problem looks like and here's what it would look like if you sketched it out on a three-dimensional axis. Now this shows the area of the base and also one cross-section. And if you're really lucky, some books even include a sketch of what the final shape would look like. So the final solid, we'll go ahead and put it on, it looks like this right here. Now, let's go ahead and we'll remove the axis and we'll remove this one section. And this is what you're actually trying to find right here. You're trying to find the volume of this green solid. So, uh, let's go back and we'll put the axis back on it and put a section back on. Now, to solve the problem, you really don't need that green shade, but sometimes it helps just to picture what it looks like to start with. But for now, let's go ahead and remove it. Now, one of the problems that uh, my students have is this, is you've got the words that describe the problem right here, and if it just gives you the final completed sketch, it's hard to understand how you go from these words to this final sketch. So before we start the problem, let's do this. Let's deconstruct this sketch, and we'll redo it again and show how you go from these words to this final sketch. So we'll go ahead and remove this section. Let's remove the base and start with just this x, y, z axis. Now, okay, now as far as the problems go, we'll look at our steps again. Uh, the problems say this. Uh, go ahead and sketch the base of the solid in the xy plane using the boundary conditions. Then we'll sketch a single cross section. So the first two steps involve just sketching it. And let's go ahead and start with this one. So sketch the base of the solid in the xy plane using the boundary conditions. So back to the problem. And here are the boundary conditions right here. So what it says is this, is um, you, the uh, volume of the solid, and the base is bounded by the region uh, given by x is equal to y squared. So to start with, just go ahead and graph x is equal to y squared. Now what that's going to be, it's just a parabola that's symmetric about the x-axis. So if you were to sketch a graph of that parabola, it would look something like this. <clears throat> now at this point, it's open on this end, so it goes on forever. So you have to find some way to restrict the region, and that's what this second one is. So this second equation is just the line y is equal to x, and that's a line that's perpendicular to the x-axis that goes through x is equal to 4. If you put that in, it would look like this. So now what you've done, you've restricted the region. This is going to be the base, and we'll go ahead and shade that base, and it'll look like this. So this is the flat base of your solid, and the solid itself is going to come up and above that. We'll go ahead and put the green one back in just real quickly. So your solid is going to go above that flat base, and it's going to have this shape. But the next question is, how do you know that it has this shape? So we'll go ahead and take this back out again. And it has to do with uh, what the cross-sectional areas look like. Now in this problem, it tells you that the cross-sectional areas are perpendicular to the x-axis, and they're in the shape of a square. So each cross-section is going to be a square. So what you want to do is to go in here and draw a single representative cross-section in the shape of a square. Now to draw that, um, you'll just go out uh, and just pick any distance x that you want to, and we'll start by putting a baseline right across here. So I'm going to go perpendicular to this, and this is going to be the bottom of my square. So a square has um, equal sides, so if it goes across like this, I'll go up this same height, I'll go across this same height, and I'll come back down, and that's going to complete a square, and that square will look like that. This will be one section. 
Now, you don't just want a plane on there. You want to make sure this thing has some thickness because you have to calculate the volume. So the thickness of this little section will be dx, and that's going to be one representative uh, cross-section in the form of a square, and it's perpendicular to the x-axis. Now, if this had said a semicircle rather than drawing a square, I would draw a semicircle here, or perhaps a trapezoid, or it could be any geometric shape. Well, we've got it, and it looks like this. Now, to build this thing up, it's going to do the following. Uh, you, rather than having one section, it's kind of like the disk method. All you're going to do is just add additional sections. So if I were to take this and uh, move it, I'll go up here, and if I were to take this and add an additional section, it would look like this. I'll move it out, say, to about right here. It'll be a little bit bigger. Then I'll take this one and I'll add another section. And it's kind of like doing the disk method. If you build up enough of these sections, then you will come up with that solid. So we'll remove the solid again, and let's go ahead and take those two sections out. But you want to start with a single section. So anyway, this is what this thing looks like. And that's how you go from these words to this sketch using these first two steps. Okay, now let's go back to our problem again. And this is what it looks like on your book, but the next question is what should it look like if you're actually working this out uh, on homework. Now the problem is a lot of students have trouble drawing a three-dimensional sketch like this, but if you can draw it in a flat plane it looks a little bit easier. So my suggestion is generally to go ahead and do this. If you're on the homework page, I would put a graph that looks like this. Draw an X and a Y axis and you're looking straight down on it from the top. And let's go ahead and now we'll actually work the problem out. This first part was just to show you what it looks like. But now let's go ahead and solve the problem using these steps. But we're going to do it on this plane just because it's easier to draw. So let's run through our steps again. And this now will actually start the problem and run through it from the, from the whole thing. So, first step says this, sketch the base of the solid in the xy plane using the boundary conditions. And we will do that on this, uh, this axis right here, because this is going to be similar to what you'd have on your homework page. So first of all, uh, I want to sketch the parabola again, just like I did over here. I want to sketch y is equal to x squared, and if I did that, it would look something like this. So I've got a parabola that's symmetric about the x-axis. Again, I want to restrict it to x is equal to 4, so I'll draw a vertical line through x is equal to 4, and if I drew that, it would look like this. So this is going to be um, going from, in this case, I would have 0 here, uh, so starting at x is equal to 0 here, and I went all the way out to x is equal to 4 right here. Okay, we'll go ahead and shade that just to get an idea of what this thing looks like. <coughs> So what I've done, this would be step number one. I've sketched a base of the solid of the object in the xy plane using the boundary conditions. So step number one is done. Now for step number two, sketch a single cross section in the required geometric shape. So let's do that on this. Now in three dimensions, it's pretty easy to do. In two dimensions, I'm going to kind of do it the same way, but I'm going to do it like this. I'll come in just some distance x here. Well, I'll come in some distance x here. And I'm going to say from, say, here to about right here. So I'll draw just a vertical line. That goes, so there's my baseline. Now here's where you can be a little bit rough. If you're just on a homework page, I want to draw this square. So I'll come up, and I'm just going to go up, say, to about right there over to there, down to there, just a rough sketch. Now I would also suggest that you give this thing a little thickness. So I'm going to go ahead and make it obvious that it has a thickness that looks like this. It goes something like this and something like this. So if it helps you, maybe kind of shade that a little bit too. So there is uh, one section of this object in this thing. So what I want now is um, the area of this section. So back to our steps, and we've done the following. Uh, we drew a sketch of the baseline. We drew a sketch of a single section. Now to actually solve it, we'll run through these steps right here. What we have to eventually do is this. The volume is equal to the integral. It's the cross-sectional area of a single section times the thickness of that section, which is dx. So on our problem right here, the thickness of this section from here to here, this little thickness right in here, is dx. X. Just like over here, the thickness of this section would be dx. Now, I came in a distance x, so from here to here, I came in this distance from here to here is x, or from there to there. And 
uh, back to our rules. <clears throat> so the rules, the next rule says this. Find a general formula for the shape that you're given. And this one's going to be pretty easy. So what we're given is this. We're given a square. So the you can just kind of write it down here. The area uh, of a square is equal to, and it's just the side squared. And I'd put it in real general terms like that. So the area is going to be a side squared. So what you're doing, you're looking at this square and you want to find out what the area is, but you have to put it in terms of your problem. So uh, we'll go back to our steps again. And the step says this. Now that you've got the general formula, find the specific area of this single cross section, but you want it in terms of x. And this step number four is probably the trickiest part of all these problems. So here it is in general, but I need to find the area of this square, or if you prefer the area of this square over here, in terms of uh, my figure. So here's where the figure comes in. You have to go in and look at it. Now if I put this distance, what I want to know is what is this distance right here? So if this is x, if I go up to here, this distance right here would be y. Now this one goes down the same distance, so this distance right here would be y. And what this is going to give me, if I take both of these together, that total distance from there to there, that's going to be the side of the square. Now y plus y, the side of the square, is going to be 2y. So this side would be 2y, this side's going to be 2y, 2y, and 2y. So this side over here would also be 2y. So I know that the side of the square is equal to 2y. So what this means is that, and I think I'll draw the picture down just a little bit here. This tells me this, that uh, the area of the square, so I'll put it right here, the area of the square, and I'm actually going to put in terms of y. So the area of the square in terms of y would just be, it's the side squared, so it would be 2y squared. Now if you square the 2 and square the y, you'd get 4y squared. And what this is, this is the area of that square, this area of the square, in terms of y. But back to our steps. Now we've still got a problem. It says, number four says, you need to find the area of the square in terms of x. And the reason is, if the integral is in terms of x, if you're going to integrate it with respect to x, then the function has to be in terms of x. So right now, you've got the area in terms of y, and you need to change it to the area in terms of x. So let's see how to do that. So what I need is this. Is um, I've got uh, the area in terms of y is 4y squared. Now I'll go back up at the top, and to change the y into an x, go back to your boundary conditions again. So we'll kind of go off here to the side and do the following. Uh, if the area is 4y squared, and from these conditions up here, I know that x is equal to y squared, Therefore, if I take the square root of both sides, I'd get the square root of x is equal to y. And I'll substitute this in for this. So rather than 4y squared, I'd have 4 times the square root of x squared. Now the square and the square root cancel out, and that's going to give me... Um, and I'll, I'll drop this back down just a little bit lower. <coughs> um, that's going to give me 4x... And what that's going to be, that's going to be the area. So the area of the square, but this time it'll be in terms of x. So I'll put here, in terms of x. So there is the area of the square in terms of x. That's what I need to solve the problem. So uh, sometimes you can go directly from the picture to the area in terms of x. Sometimes you'll get it in terms of y first, and then you'll convert it in terms of x. So that's the area in terms of x. So let's go back to our rules. <coughs> and the next thing says this. Okay, now you need to find the limits of integration. So let's go back to the picture. And again, since it's dx in this ray, the, and we'll kind of put it in both places, the, uh, the limits of integration are going to go from x, in this case, x equals 0, all the way across here to x equals 4. So the limits of integration go from x equals 0 to x equals 4. And now you've got everything you need to set the problem up. 
So we'll go down here and let's go back to our final step. <clears throat> the final step says to evaluate the integral using this formula. So it's the integral of the cross-sectional area in terms of x times the thickness of the cross-section. So back to our sketch again. We'll go ahead and write that down. So the volume is going to be uh, the integral <clears throat> from x equal 0 to x equal 4 of the cross-sectional area, which is 4x times the thickness of the cross-section, which is dx. So it actually turns into a pretty simple integral. So you can make that be 4 times the integral from 0 to 4 of just x dx, which would give you uh, 4 times, and that's going to be x squared divided by 2 evaluated from 0 to 4. <clears throat> and that's going to give you, again, the 2's will cancel out, so you'd have 2 times, uh, and we'll go ahead and put in 4 squared minus 0 squared which is going to give you 2 times 16, which will give you 32. So the volume of the solid object will be 32 cubic units, whatever those units are. Now let's go back up to the top and see what that actually looks like then. If you were to, let's go ahead and put the uh, green solid back on here. <clears throat> so it looks like this, and we'll remove um, the axis and the section that the actual volume of this thing right here would be 32 units, whatever those units are. Uh, and then finally we'll go ahead and put the axis back on again. So anyway, the steps are, let's go back and run through the steps one more time. The steps look like this. <clears throat> First of all, sketch the base of the solid in the xy plane using the boundary conditions. And when you sketch a solid, you'll have that gray area right there. Then, second step is go ahead and sketch a single cross-section in the required geometric shape. And I would do it like this. So there's a single square uh, cross-section. Then uh, find a general formula for the given shape. Now in this case, we were working with, it tells you in the problem, you're working with a square. So the area of a square is just the side square. If this had been in the form of a semicircle, then you would work with the area of a circle. Uh, if it, it could be a rectangle or a triangle, but you'll start with just right here the general formula for whatever the geometric shape is that you're looking at. Then um, <clears throat> the next part is go ahead and find the area of that cross section, but this time specifically in terms of your figure. And that's what the next section is, is uh, changing it from this was the general formula and you're going to change it into your specific formula, which is this one right here for your figure. Once you've got the area, then it's just a matter of plugging it into the formula, and the final formula would be the cross-sectional area in terms of x times dx. So uh, back to the figure again. Now that you know the cross-sectional area, plug it in right here, evaluate the integral, and evaluating the integral is actually pretty easy. So again, as far as drawing the sketch goes, uh, some of my students are good at drawing three-dimensional sketches, and they'll draw it like this. Other ones, especially on a homework or on an exam, it's easier to draw uh, the three-dimensional view looking directly down from the top. So you might want to draw this view. Both of them will give you the same thing, so just whichever one you like better. But anyway, follow this series of steps, and they'll... Uh, make a pretty good guide for solving these problems. Now in the next video, what we'll do is look at exactly the same problem, but rather than having a square, we'll put a semicircle in there. And then later on, replace it with a triangle or a trapezoid. It could be anything, but the, uh, the rules will be the same process. So anyway, hopefully that helps you a little bit on how to visualize and work uh, cross-sectional uh, volumes using cross-sectional area.